Hello everyone, and do I have a great game for you. Uh, the game was played uh, between my brother-in-law Goran Martic and uh, the legendary Garry Kasparov. Uh, it was played in August last year, in 2016, Garry Kasparov came to Koprivnica. Uh, he came to sign a, a, an agreement uh, about founding a chess academy there in Koprivnica. And while he's there, he, they decided that he will play a simultaneous exhibition against 15 players. Uh, Goran Martic was uh, one of the lucky 15 who will get to play Garry Kasparov. And, uh, you know, it was, it was quite an interesting game, uh, right from the opening. And it was a very hot day, you know, at the end of August, it was like 35, maybe more uh, degrees Celsius. And Kasparov had to walk around, you know, playing 15 players in a circle. Uh, you know, that, that guy is still in shape, you know. And it took him like uh, one hour and 40 minutes uh, to finish all the games. He won all the games. And uh, as it usually is, I mean, in regular simultaneous exhibitions, uh, the one who holds it always has the white pieces on every board. Uh, so let's see the game. Kasparov has the white pieces, and I did use this photo of him. Uh, this is a photo from that uh, simultaneous exhibition. If you full screen the video, you can see some people there watching. So, you know, you can see uh, the image is all, uh, you know, uh, burned out from the sun. So, yeah, it was a very hot day. Uh, so, okay, Kasparov plays e4, we have e5 by Goran Martic, uh, knight to f3, knight c6, and bishop to b5. Kasparov goes for the Rui Lopez, and already uh, Goran tries to surprise uh, Kasparov by playing knight g to e7, uh, the notorious Kozio defense. And this is something uh, probably often used by players uh, when they want to, you know, uh, trick a higher rated opponent. As uh, a couple of days ago, I showed a game played between uh, Max Deutsch, you know, that obsessive learner. He also tried to surprise Magnus Carlsen by playing knight g to e7. Uh, but that didn't turn out that well. Uh, okay, knight to c3 by Kasparov and a6, uh, kicking away the bishop from b5, bishop to c4 by Kasparov. Uh, of course, not capturing uh, on c6. You don't want to allow black to capture with knight, knight captures on c6. As black already uh, uh, has an awkwardly, awkwardly placed knight on e7, so you don't want to uh, let him, you know, uh, set it, free, set it uh, free for nothing. And uh, you don't want to give up the bishop pair. So bishop to c4 by Kasparov, and we have knight to g6. Now over protecting the e5 pawn and preparing maybe bishop e to e7, maybe bishop to c5, uh, depending on what white plays. And here Kasparov plays d3. And d3 isn't the best move. The best move is d4 here in this position, and uh, there's there's a reason to this. Uh, by playing d3, uh, Kasparov allows this move knight to a5, and now he's losing the light square bishop. So uh, if Goran wanted, he could have uh, went for, for this exchange. And this is a very strong light square bishop, so this uh, definitely would have been the best move. Uh, but I think Kasparov played d3 uh, for two reasons. Uh, uh, he wanted. To, he he probably thought that Goran was uh, an expert in the Kozio defense, so he probably didn't want to go for the main line. And number two, uh, he doesn't want to exchange pieces right right from the start, as he is the stronger player. So he would like to keep pieces on the board. But knight a5 after d3 definitely would have been great for Black. Uh, but Goran continued the game with bishop to e7. He didn't want to grab that bishop on c4. So, okay, Kasparov immediately goes for h4, and now he wants to kick that awkwardly placed knight on g6, uh, d6, and d6 uh, is an okay move for black. Uh, black did have an option for maybe h6 or h5, uh, but there isn't really, an, there, it really isn't necessary to stop h5. So, Goran played d6, and this is perfectly fine. Uh, Kasparov went for h5 immediately. Uh, and here Goran has uh, at least two good options. Uh, one, one good option is knight to f8. And after h6, g6, and uh, this, is, this is a perfectly fine for position for black. And uh, the other one, after h5, he could have gone for knight to h4. Uh, now the threat, uh, of course, is bishop to g4 to pin the knight on f3. So Kasparov would have to exchange knight captures, bishop captures. Uh, and after something like h6, g6, and knight to d5, now eyeing that c7 pawn, the threat, of course, is uh, rook captures uh, on h4, but after bishop to e7, this, uh, this is a perfectly fine position for black to play. Uh, but after h5, Goran didn't play knight to h4 or f8, he played knight to f4. Uh, and Kasparov immediately takes advantage of this. This knight already played uh, three or four moves, 
uh, Kasparov takes it immediately and uh, you know messes up a black spawn structure. E captures an f4 and queen to d2. Now Kasparov is threatening to capture the f4 pawn, and there really isn't a way to to defend it other than maybe uh, bishop to g5. But you don't want to you don't want to give up that bishop, and uh, you're you're probably not going to even be able to save the pawn. Uh, so Goran decides to go for, for, for active play. He plays knight to e5 uh, with the idea that if knight captures, d captures z, now he's protecting the f4 pawn and this position is extremely great for black. Uh, but the other idea is after knight e5, what Kasparov played, he did capture the pawn, of course, queen captures on f4 and now Goran uh, grabs the bishop on c4 and he messes up Gary's pawn structure. But this is for the price of a pawn d captures on c4 and the goran plays bishop to f6 uh, we have knight to d5 and uh, here goran plays bishop to e7 uh, why didn't he go for bishop captures on b2 that's that's an interesting variation if bishop captures on b2 uh, rook b1 now with a tempo on the bishop uh, and now after bishop comes that comes back to f6 now kasparov has h6 and now you can't move the g-pawn as uh, your bishop will be hanging, so something like castles would have to be played. And after h captures, bishop captures, and the knight to h4, uh, this knight is threatening to come to f5, uh, white would have a, a powerful attack here. So after knight e5, uh, Goran played bishop to e7, and now we have h6. Uh, Goran replies with g6. Although a much active, uh, a much more active move would have been g5, for example, and after queen g3, something like bishop to e6, and uh, Kasparov is better here, but it, it is somewhat playable for black. Uh, but but after after g6, this doesn't really force white into anything, so Kasparov simply castles queenside. Uh, we have bishop to e6, and now c5 by Kasparov. Uh, he wants to open up the position. Uh, this is a small inaccuracy by the world champion. Uh, but he, of course, has to play fast, <laughs> so other players would have to play fast as well. Uh, e5 would have been a better move, as after e5 he's threatening e captures on d6, and uh, this comes with a threat of opening up the e file. Uh, after playing c5, you're you're still better, but now you're going to open up the c file after capturing. So bishop captures on d5 by Goran, uh, rook captures on d5 and c6. Now kicking away the rook. Uh, rook to d3, and uh, probably again the best move would have been g5, and after queen g3, trying trying something. White is much better here, but uh, still g5 would have been would have been the move to play. Uh, but uh, Goran decided to you know cut all efforts from defending on the king side, and he, he tried to go for some activity with queen to a5. Uh, now eyeing that a2 pawn. Uh, Kasparov replied c captures on d6, now threatening to capture the bishop on e7, and uh, Goran played bishop to d8. Uh, unfortunately, queen captures on a2 doesn't really do anything for black. After d captures on e7, queen a1 check, uh, king d2, queen a5 check, king can simply go to e2, and the black has nothing here. Uh, nothing to hope for, and really nothing to play here. So after c captures on d6, uh, bishop, capture, uh, bishop on d8, uh, and the d7 by Kasparov. Uh, this comes with check, and uh, already this is very inconvenient for Goran. Uh, if king to e7, then queen to d6 is checkmate immediately. And uh, after d7, uh, Goran played king to f8. And uh, this is a beautiful position. Um, in this position, uh, Kasparov misses a, a very nice tactical shot. Uh, Kasparov in this position played king to b1. Uh, but he had this b4 idea. Uh, after b4, now queen captures on a2 is of course nothing. Uh, if you capture on b4, then queen e5 is, is just, uh, you know, a monster move. Uh, threatening the rook on h8 and also threatening e8, this would have been uh, game over immediately. And uh, even if you don't capture the pawn, for example, if queen to c7, then simply e5 uh, and black is without a move. So, okay, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, after king to f8, uh, white's position is uh, a lot better, so the world champion, the former world champion can uh, allow himself the luxury to play one safe move. Uh, king to b1, uh, so queen to c5, Goran plays queen to c5 to prepare uh, queen e7 to bring the queen back into the defense. Uh, e5 now, uh, queen to e7, uh, rook h to d1, Kasparov doubles up on the d-file, 
rook to g8. Uh, we have e6 now. Of course, uh, you can't capture the pawn is pinned, and uh, capturing with the queen uh, would would result in a, in a very quick uh, finish after something like uh, knight to g5. Uh, or rook to e1, you know, uh, rook e1, uh, what are you going to play here as black? Uh, have to give up the queen, or black, white really has too many options to win here if you capture a pawn. Uh, so, uh, f6 was played. Now knight to g5, again, the knight can be captured as the f-pawn is pinned. Uh, f5 was played, and now knight to f7 by Kasparov. Uh, white, white, uh, <laughs> Goran is completely tied down here. Uh, here he played uh, a5, uh, sort of like a, a waiting move to see what Kasparov does. Uh, knight captures on d8 was played, rook captures on d8, and now queen to c7. Uh, what do you do here is black? Well, you don't really, you don't really have a lot of moves here. He played uh, g5, go, going for some expansion on the king side. Uh, Kasparov played queen captures on a5, and here. Uh, Probably, probably the only moves that uh, that continue the struggle for for <laughs> for black are something like rook g6 uh, to be able to play rook f6 uh, or maybe b5. Uh, but uh, Goran simply played f4 and uh, Kasparov played queen to f5 uh, with check. And in this position, uh, Goran Martic resigned the game. Uh, as it doesn't matter what he plays, uh, queen f7, queen captures f7 is checkmate, and the only other legal move is queen f6, and this also leads to queen captures on f6 with checkmate. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, that's uh, that's how <laughs> uh, how my brother-in-law faced uh, former world champion Gary Kasparov, and uh, like I said, uh, Kasparov won all 15 games. It took him like uh, one hour and 40 minutes. Uh, and you know, a great day, a great day for chess, definitely. And uh, you know, a great game by my brother-in-law, who really tried tried to revive the cozy of defense. And uh, a, a better game by Gary Kasparov, who played uh, a very nice game by the cozy <laughs> against the cozy of defense. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.